Good morning. My name is Eric Oshaban, and today I'll be speaking about my 2020 surf project regarding trade-offs between performance and environmental impacts for ground tire rubber used as an asphalt binder modifier and asphalt mixtures. Specifically, what I mean by that is I wanted to look at how performance is impacted by the use of tire rubber as an asphalt binder modifier. And from those results, if a reduced performance may be offset by a reduction in environmental impact, or inversely, if added initial environmental impacts may be offset by improved performance for the case of ground tire rubber used in asphalt binders. Moving into the background of this project, from an initial literature survey, it was found that asphalt mixtures using ground tire rubber, or GTR for short, as an asphalt binder modifier may present some performance enhancements over traditional virgin binder asphalt mixtures. Some common methods that are currently used for recycling tires are landfilling, uh, use of tires as tire derived fuel in cement kilns and at paper mills, among other things, and the use of ground tire rubber as an asphalt binder modifier or asphalt mixture additive. Landfilling presents us with the obvious issues of land use and there's never going to be any repurposing of tires. Uh, they'll just sit there. Uh, in addition to that, from a study performed this past year in Puerto Rico by Dr. Milena Rangelov of the Federal Highway Administration, uh, tire landfills have been found to offer excellent breeding grounds for mosquitoes and other insects, causing an increased risk of vector-borne illness in these areas. This scenario kind of ties in the potential social impacts that might be created by um, landfilling or improper management of tire recycling. Moving on, uh, a study by Dr. Rebe Feraldi found that the use of tire drive fuel to create, uh, would create significantly higher environmental impacts than when tire rubber is used as an asphalt binder modifier or asphalt mixture additive. The use of tire drive fuel also often requires additional burden of long distance transportation. Uh, when we look back at the study in Puerto Rico, namely uh, it required cargo ship transportation, which tends to be extremely costly in terms of environmental impacts. So with these other two options kind of narrowed down, uh, it leaves GTR uses an asphalt binder modifier an important place for being researched as it not only provides a method for recycling tires and reducing the number of landfill tires, but it may also pro provide improved performance characteristics in asphalt mixtures. The gap that I found to be missing in, this, in the research regarding this area was a lack of methodology for decision makers to determine the trade-offs between performance and environmental impacts when using ground tire rubber as an asphalt binder modifier. The question I was really trying to answer is, what is the optimal amount of ground tire rubber used before either performance characteristics begin to fall off or environmental impacts begin to increase compared to a standard virgin binder asphalt mixture? A recent Michigan Tech graduate, Dr. Chaitanya Bhatt, presented a methodology for multi-objective optimization when using reclaimed asphalt pavement and recycled asphalt shingles in asphalt mixtures. This methodology allows us to find an optimal amount of additive without sacrificing environmental impacts or performance characteristics. Because of this, it seemed like a natural fit to use this methodology to determine the trade-offs experienced for the case of ground tire rubber as an asphalt binder modifier. Moving into the task section on the right, the first stage is to conduct a comprehensive literature survey to narrow our scope and preliminarily determine the direction that our research may take. This stage is also important for determining the appropriate performance characteristics to use for a trade-off analysis and to find complete and accurate performance data. From this stage, it was determined that the best route to take was a trade-off analysis between flow number and global warming potential. Flow number was picked as it is representative of the viscosity of an asphalt binder and is commonly correlated to rutting potential. In most cases, if the flow number increases, the rutting resistance of an asphalt mixture is going to increase as well. Global warming potential is likely the most common environmental midpoint indicator when discussing construction material life cycle assessment. 
Global warming potential is the CO2 equivalent of all air emissions released by the production of a material. In our case, we use a system boundary of cradle to gate, meaning environmental impacts are measured from things such as electricity production and crude oil production to create an asphalt binder all the way up until the asphalt mixture is leaving the production facility where it was made. <clears throat> Moving into stage two, uh, stage two is the creation of the life cycle inventory. As I just mentioned, our life cycle inventory compiles the environmental impacts starting from the production of raw materials all the way up to when the asphalt mixture is leaving the production facility. Uh, it's important to understand these characteristics because the vast amount of burden caused by everything needed to create an asphalt mixture. We don't want to just look at what's happening at the production facility. We want to see the resources that are going into that asphalt mixture, the impacts that they're creating as well. So yeah, this, this process incorporates transportation of raw materials, raw material sourcing, energy use that production facilities involved and, and so on. <clears throat> Stage three is when we begin the analysis portion of this project. As stated before, our multi-objective analysis is used to determine how much change in environmental impact occurs with an increase in rubber content, how much change in performance occurs with an increase in rubber content. And finally, we can use those together to determine the optimal solution where neither performance nor environmental impact are being decreased. And this leads us to our analysis explanation and results section. We can see from the two graphs in the analysis explained section how both global warming potential on the left and flow number on the right increase with an increase in rubber content. Uh, it should be noted also at this point that due to a lack of data availability, we were forced to use styrene booty and styrene rubber data um, instead of ground tire rubber data specifically. Going below those two graphs, we can see the objective function, which maximizes the flow number without sacrificing increased global warming potential impacts. Uh, the functions below that, f of x, uh, was created from the flow number versus rubber content data, and g of x is created from the global warming potential versus rubber content data, g of x being the left graph and f of x being the graph on the right. <clears throat> The constraints that we are holding our functions to uh, restrict the function from sacrificing flow number or global warming potential compared to a standard virgin binder asphalt mixture. Uh, while there are several ways that I could find the solution of the system, just because of uh, ease of use and my familiarity with it, I use Wolfram Mathematica to solve for this. Going into the results and outcomes section, our results showed an increase in flow number by just under 60%, while also increasing in global warming potential by 0.8% for an asphalt mixture with 5% rubber content by weight of asphalt binder. Uh, and this is compared to a standard virgin binder asphalt mixture. So we're seeing a pretty steep increase in flow number or an increase in rutting resistance and extremely minimal increase in global warming potential. Uh, moving into our back to our objective function, uh, to not increase the global warming potential, it was found that optimum rubber content is going to be around 1.55%. Um, and from this, uh, it, it might be possible that the increase in performance in rutting, uh, rutting performance could offset the environmental impacts that are created from this, um, but it, it'd take further research to really know for sure. Um, from this research, uh, this project kind of served as a basis for me to create a conference paper to submit to the Transportation Research Board in this past August. Um, with that, I've continued working with Dr. Amlam Mukherjee in the life cycle assessment field for construction materials. Uh, projects that I'm currently working on are with the Federal Highway Administration and the Arizona Department of Transportation, and they involve database contribution and the compilation of pavement construction processes for use in pavement decision making.
And that's my presentation. I'd just like to thank, take this time to thank the judges and thank everyone involved with SURF. Um, it's really been an amazing opportunity for me. It's definitely broadened my horizons in this field. Um, never really thought I'd be involved in this type of field or research in general. And I think it's something that most people in my field, civil engineering, really don't get to experience. So I'm extremely appreciative. Thank you.